You came here, the revolution gear, in 1968, with a film. I can't remember the English title, Jag älskar, du älskar, in Swedish, with Sven Volten, Eva, Britt Sternberg. And what happened with that film? It was shown the last day of the festival. I mean, nobody knew it would be the last day, because um, the next morning, uh, Jean-Luc Godard, Louis Malle, Roman Podansky, and some other from the new French New Wave, went up on the big stage of uh, the um, big festival hall and said, the festival is over. And they just drew the curtain. And this was uh, because in the aftermath of the um, Paris 68 um, uh, movement. Yeah. So my first feature film was one of the last films shown at the <laughs> 1968 film festival. And now it's your fourth time in Cannes, isn't that what an applause? Yeah. And uh, so we are so thrilled, so we, we, we don't have, uh, we, have you asked the uh, director so they are not going to close down the festival before mm -hmm. <laughs> Tuesday when you will have your big gala screening. But tell us about what, when did you first see an Ingrid Bergman film and when did you first notice her? her presence in a film, and what did you think about her when you grew up with her in some of her films? I wonder, because I went to the movies the first time, I mean, in the evening when I was around 10, with my parents and a brother, and uh, that was like um, people are talking about when they become religious. It was like uh, seeing Jesus in the church or something like that. So after that, I went to movies, to see movies almost well, as often as, as I could. And there was a small cinema in central Stockholm where they showed old films. And I think the first Ingrid Bergman film was not one of her best, but her second American movie. No, third American movie, The Rage of Heaven, as far as I can remember. And, but, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's interesting to hear. And uh, the producer, Stina Gadell, when did you decide to, uh, to uh, be a part in this movie, when to produce it? When uh, Stig uh, called me from Berlin Film Festival and asked me, should we make a film about Ingrid Bergman because Isabella Rossellini just asked me if we should make a film about Mama. And of course I said, no, I don't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> of course I said, yes, I'm in. This is one of the most fun films I ever worked with. The team is fantastic. And also getting to learn Ingrid Bergman sitting in this archive, Westland archive, reading her letters, her diaries. She was nine years old, ten years old, talking about herself. It was, of course, it's amazing. But you decide to uh, to have a big part in Swedish in the film. Why why did you why did you do that? This was a big discussion because Ingrid Bergman she was global. She spoke five languages: Italian, French, German, Swedish, and English, of course. And active. And active. <laughs> so she is a very international, original language talking actress. And when we came to these letters, she has. She wrote them in, uh, in Swedish, of course. And then when we asked Alicia Vikander if she wanted to, to, to read these letters in our film, you, this, you, you told us from the beginning, Alicia said, you shouldn't do this in English. The fact that she continued to write her diaries in Swedish throughout her own life. And I thought that was you know, a dear proof of the fact that she held that language with her in the same sense that I think you know, Ingrid, who can work in other languages, my native language will, I hope, always be as close as it is to me now. Yes, but you are the hardest <laughs> woman in uh, working in the film business right now. How did you have time for this? Because it, it was uh, short notice. When they asked me if I was interested, same thing there. You know, it was the you biggest said, honor. Else should do it. <laughs> no, it was yeah. you know um, to to try and do her voice, an actress that I've grown up and I've admired so much, and to um, uh, go. Oh my God! If you ask me, I can't. <laughs> How you have time? How, How I have time? Have time? Well, <laughs> you know, I, I said to them, I you know, I, there's nothing else 
but my all, all my love, I want to do this. And then you came Saturday to in London, Saturday in London, we in went Copenhagen. to Copenhagen. Yeah, yeah. So we managed to kind of meet up and talk over yeah. the phone and decide things. And just spent you had two your different little free time you have. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. Thank you. And thank you for you know, taking the time and finding it. A big challenge for you uh, with this film is to attract a young audience. And that's another question for Alicia, because you, you're very young yourself, and uh, how do you think, uh, how do you want uh, young people to, 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 to find this movie? First of all, I think it's a life story that just attracts anyone, whatever age they're in. Um, and I don't know, I guess I'm young and I'm just remarked by, you know, coming so close to her, as you said, by reading her letters, her diaries, you kind of, you know, you get so close to this very intelligent, extremely strong woman who I must say, in my mind, is so ahead of her time, who jumped, you know, went on that trip at the age of 21 to follow her dream, and um, that is just remarkable, I think, and I think it's an inspiration for every young person to believe that you can do what she did. And the music, have, uh, come, come, come to me again, <laughs> uh, it's, it, the music is composed by Michael Nyman, yes. the, you know, the composer from the piano. How did you manage to, to get him to make the music? Uh, about five years ago, there was a um, uh, Bergman, Ingmar Bergman um, celebration in uh, Mexico City, because Michael Nyman, he lives in Mexico City, has a house there. He spends four or five months in Mexico and the rest in London and Europe. And um, we happened to meet during this uh, Ingmar Bergman um, celebration and became friends. I saw him later on in Mexico City and um, uh, when I made my previous film uh, at uh, the theater uh, Dramat in Stockholm, Tanya Alexander and I, I also asked Michael to uh, have uh, composed music for that. So that was our first collaboration. So when I asked him again, he said yes. This is Eva Dahlgren, who made the end credit song, both in English and Swedish. And what did you think when uh, Stig or Stina asked you about this? Well, actually, I asked them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been working on this film as a Super 8 photographer uh, for like uh, two years now. And uh, during that time, I was also writing music for, for myself. And I was so touched by this, uh, by the, by this work and by, by the story and by working in this team. So I started to write a different kind of, of music. And uh, one day I, I wrote a song and I just felt, well, this is the Ingrid song. And I called Steve and said, yeah. you must listen to this. This is the Ingrid song. And he said, yes, it is. Yeah. And Stina said, yes, it is. Thank you so much. Thank you.